Hi, this is Kim, and you're watching ECT TV, episode 34. So if you are watching this when I upload it, this week on my blog I am having Charm Week. So every day you'll find a, another tutorial on how to make a charm. And then on Friday I'm going to give you a whole bunch of links to all the different charms um, that I have shown you throughout time. <laughs> so you can have a nice place to go if you're needing some charm inspiration. In that vein, we are going to be making a charm today. Now, I'm going to be showing you just sort of a, a simple charm, but I'm going to show you how to make your own head pin so you can customize this charm. So last episode, we also had another special head pin, so you might want to refer back to that and get other ideas. Um, and if you're wondering why I'm all about charms this week, well, I love charm bracelets, first of all, um, but I am re-releasing my charm, charm bracelet e-course. So you can take it anytime. You can start at any time. Um, I actually even have a payment plan option now if um, you would like to utilize that. So when you purchase, you get access to a for lesson e-course, you have the option of signing up to get weekly lessons in your inbox, or if you prefer to just take the course at your own pace, you have access to everything right away and you can just work through it as, as you wish. So that is why I'm all about charms to speak. So I'm teaching you about charms. You get to get a charm bracelet e-course and then add those charms in. and. Um, have an awesome charm bracelet with all your memories and your self-expression. Um, it's Charm bracelets are one of my favorite things to make. So let's get started with our charm for this episode. So first I am going to show you how to make two different types of head pins that you can use to make bead dangles, which is a type of charm, and then I'm going to give you some ideas of how to use those head pins in your charms. So what I'm showing you right here is a charm bracelet I made, this is one of my own personal charm bracelets. It's very colorful with lots of beads. Um, I actually used African Christmas beads from Happy Mango Beads to make each one of these dangles. And they are all on um, open spiral head pins, which is the first head pin I'm going to show you. The great thing about making your own head pins is, as you can see, I have different lengths of bead dangles here. And so you can make your head pins as long or as short as you need them. So if you want to put more beads on one, you can make it longer, you know, or if you don't need it to be as long, you can make it shorter. Um, and the other great thing is that um, the spiral at the end will hold the beads from sliding off. So sometimes when you buy a head pin from a jewelry supply store, it'll have a ball or it'll have kind of a flat end. And your bead might be bigger than that end that's there to stop the bead. So I have a couple suggestions. One thing is you could use a smaller bead first and then put the larger bead on. Or, if you make your own head pin, the spiral at the end here um, will be large enough to hold the bead on. And you can make, if you have very large beads, then you can actually make the spiral as big as you need it to be. So, I'm going to show you how to make the spiral head pin. 
um, and so it's this is an open spiral so the inside is open and then the, there's spirals around the outside as you can see on my bracelets so this is what you'll need to make your open spiral head pin you'll need some wire I'm using 20 gauge half hard round wire um, you only need a few inches for your head pin but like I, I mentioned in the introduction you can make your head pin as long or short as you need um, you know depending on what size your beads are or how many beads you'd like to use on your head pin you'll need wire cutters you'll need round nose pliers you will need chain nose pliers and then you'll need a hammer um, so you'll either need a nylon, this is a nylon hammer, so it has nylon ends, or a rawhide hammer does the same thing. This hammer will um, harden your wire without changing its shape, um, so it, won't, it will not flatten the wire, it will just harden the wire. And we're just going to harden the spiral part, not the actual wire, because we'll be using that wire um, to actually make a bead dangle. Or, you can use a chasing hammer and that has this flat side and then the ball peen side and when you hammer with it it does flatten the wire so that gives it a different look um, so it's up to you which way you'd like to go and then you'll need a steel bench block um, this is mine sometimes you'll find them smaller you will need a little tiny small one if that's what you have that's fine um, or if you use an anvil on your work table. Okay, to start off, um, we're going to start with our round nose pliers. Now, on my round nose pliers, you're going to see a mark that I have made with a Sharpie. And I um, do this, and it does come off, which I've had people suggest like how to make the mark not come off, but I actually don't mind that the mark comes off because I like to make a new mark and be able to change where this mark is. So basically you're making a mark on your pliers um, so that all your loops are the same. So the one that's very clear on the video, this is more the mark I use to make my loops when I'm making bead dangles and wire wrapped bead links. Um, but when I usually make spirals, I have a little mark down toward the tip. And that is for the first loop um, before we start spiraling. spiraling. So, um, the first step is to actually make a mark on your pliers toward the end of the pliers so that all of your spirals will be the same. And then after you do that, you can just set aside your pliers, let the Sharpie mark dry, and we'll move on to the next step. So I'm grabbing my wire and I'm just straining it a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight. It can have a little bit of a curve because we're actually spiraling the end of it, so it's okay. Um, and I'm gonna cut a few inches. And like I mentioned this before, um, you can make these head pins whatever length you like. So um, I typically like to use a lot of two inch head pins. So you need a little bit more than three inches to make a two inch head pin um, in this way. Um, you may want to make them longer. You probably wouldn't want them to be too much shorter than that, but you might want it longer if you're going to be adding a lot of beads to your head pin. And I'm just going to make a flush cut on each side. Um, and that just, you're just going to use the back of your wire cutters toward the work and that makes a nice straight flush cut. And now going back to our round nose pliers, we're going to start our spiral by making a loop. So I'm holding the wire in my round nose pliers um, and the wire is up toward the top but not poking through my pliers and then we just want to make sure that it's straight down 
from where you've made your mark at the tip. And I don't think I mentioned this, it doesn't really matter so much where you make this mark or what size your first loop is, just as long as throughout a project you use this, you're consistent using the same um, size. So I'm holding my wire, and now I'm just going to twist away with my wrist on it with one hand, and with the other hand I'm going to hold my thumb and wrap the wire around the pliers. I go as far as I can, your wrist will only let you twist so far, and then readjust and come back, and then go ahead and finish making the loop. And it will look like a P or a lowercase case B. Okay, so now you're going to hold the loop in your chain nose pliers. So I just have my, this loop inside the chain nose pliers. I'm holding my pliers closed. And we're going to start to spiral around that original loop. So how, to do that, you just hold in your hand and then you just push up the wire like that, bring it, the wire back out, um, the loop back out, and readjust it so the wire's coming out this way again, and then go up, and you just keep pushing up the wire, readjusting, and going around, and you'll get faster as you go. And I like to go around two times, and then you have this spiral here. And then you just want to take your chain nose pliers and bend back so that the wire is centered and not off center anymore. So that when you um, put the bead on, the wire will be, you know, directly underneath instead of off to the side. Okay, so now just to make sure the end, the spiral, keeps its shape, we'll hammer only the spiral. You do not want to hammer this part because we'll still be bending it and using it, and if you hammer it, it will make it hard and difficult to use. So I'm just going to hammer the very end, and I had mentioned before about the different hammers you could use. So that is the spiral head pen. So our next head pin is going to be a knotted head pin, and I have a little sample of a charm bracelet here. This is Halloween themed, um, but I used all knotted head pins um, for all of these bead dangles. So it's a little skull, you see it's a little knot at the bottom, and even um, the black beads I used. So I'm going to show you how to make a knotted head pin. Um, you don't have to make such a Halloween uh, bracelet with it, <laughs> but um, that is an idea. Okay, so now we're going to make a knotted head pin. And for this head pin, I like to use 22 or even 24 gauge half hard round wire. Um, this wire is a little bit thinner, a little bit easier to use, and you'll understand why that's important shortly. You will need chain nose pliers, and you'll need wire cutters. So again, you can kind of decide how long you want um, your head pin to be. You want to cut this at least a few inches long. And then we're going to just fold down about an inch and a half of wire, and then you want to pinch it so it's close. 
So, once you get that pinched together, you want to hold the tip in your chain nose pliers. You might want to hold it just at the very tip here. Um, I'm holding just the tip of this where the bend is. I'm holding it down for this because I have a little bit more um, control. And now I'm just going to bend the smaller piece up so it's kind of looking like an L. And this part should be pinched down a little bit more than it is. So I'm just going to go ahead and pinch it a little bit more. Okay, now I'm just going to hold this here and we're just going to wrap around and now it's just a matter of continuing to wrap around um, and this can be a little bit finicky to do but um, just kind of use your chain nose pliers and try to hold on and you're just going to keep wrapping around and this can be as messy or as clean as you like. Alright, and then once you have it, your wire wrapped as much as you want, um, if you have a little bit left, just trim off any excess. And then your head pin is ready to use. So I'm going to show you how to make a bead dangle. I've shown you how to do this before, and actually I even showed this on my blog yesterday um, with a different head pin, so you might want to check that out if you're interested in making your own head pins um, and you want to try out a different design. Um, here I have several charm bracelets. I have, I have six these are all from my own personal collection. I made them all, but um, I wear all of these, not at the same time, <laughs> uh, but I do wear them all. And all of them have bead dangles in them as a significant part of the design. Um, some of them, that is the entire design. So I can show you a few if, you, if you'd like. <laughs> This is a purple one, which I really love, and um, there are other charms on here, but the reason it's kind of so chunky um, is because it has all the bead dangles. Um, I already showed you this one earlier when I was showing you the head pins, and I showed you this one too, my Halloween one. And this is another example. Um, this has more than just bead dangles. It has some buttons and it has a photo charm. But the bead dangles are a big part of it. This has lucite flowers, but they were put together in the same way I put together my bead dangles. So I just stack them up and then uh, make them into a bead dangle. And then this bracelet, which I wear quite often, um, has all bead dangles on it. <laughs> so you can see how you can really fill up a charm bracelet and really make pretty jewelry with bead dangles. That's why I'm always talking about them. <laughs> um, so I'm going to show you quickly how to do it again. Um, and an idea for a charm with um, one of your new head pins. Okay, so now we're going to put together a charm. So, what you will need for this part of the project is your head pins, whichever ones you decide to use. I'm using three knotted head pins for this particular charm. Um, I'm also going to use three beads. These are recycled glass beads I got from Happy Mango Beads. I think these are 10 millimeter. And then I'm going to be using bead caps. These particular ones are very light. They're like filigree. Um, and so I'm going to use two for each bead. So I need six. And then I'm going to add some heart charms. 
to me a few of those. Um, I got these particular ones. Um, I've had them a really long time. Um, but I do believe that I got them at a website called Chubby Chico Charms. Um, and if that's not where I got them, that place has tons of charms. So <laughs> you could probably find a charm that you will like there. And then you'll need some 4mm jump rings. And the tools you'll need are chain nose pliers, round nose pliers, wire cutters, and a pair of bent nose pliers. So to get started, we're going to make three bead dangles with our bead and two bead caps for each one. So I'm just going to slide oops, a bead cap and then a bead and then another bead cap you of course can use any number of beads or however you want to do this it's fine so but that's what I'm using and then I'm going to taking my round nose pliers and I'm going to make a bead a wire wrapped loop um, so I'm going to use this mark that I have that's in the middle of my round nose pliers and like I've said before <laughs> you can use any mark you're putting your mark anywhere you want just use the same mark consistently throughout your project so I am lining up my wire with that mark and I'm holding it um, my, my the wire in round nose pliers with just a small space in between the bead, well really the bead cap and the pliers. And you pull the wire down toward you and then in between the pliers and the bead. And then you remove uh, the bead from your round nose pliers. Now I'm grabbing my chain nose pliers and I will hold that loop in my chain nose pliers. I'm going to go around, wrap this wire around one time, and while I'm doing that, I am going to straighten the loop. Um, as you see, it's off to the side, and I want it to be straight. So I just do that as I wrap around once, and then switching hands, and I'm going to grab my bent nose pliers and complete the wraps. You just want to keep, try to keep your wraps tight and close together and even, and you want to go around a few times. And now I just trim off the excess wire, and I'm going to use my chain nose pliers to make sure the end is not sticking out. You can just kind of go around and make sure my loop is straight. So that is one bead dangle. I'm going to make three exactly in the same way. All right, so now I have my three bead dangles and I'm just gonna set them aside for now. Um, and now I'm going to just go ahead and open up several jump rings um, that I'm going to need for the project. It's I find it's easier to open all the jump rings you need at the beginning of a project or all at the same time because then you don't have to keep switching tools so you're using two specific tools when you're opening jump rings you might be using different tools and this way you can just you know keep in the flow so right now I'm just going to open up one two three four, seven or eight jump rings and if you need assistance opening jump rings then um, I'm just going to post a link to a video I did on how to properly open and close jump rings. Um, if you go over to KimberlyKohler.com you will find a link to that video. Okay, so now I have my jump rings open, I have my bead dangles, and I have these little hearts. I'm going to add them all together. So, I'm going to take an open jump ring I'm just going to slide some of this out of the way. And I'm going to add to it a bead dangle. And then also to that 
same uh, jump ring, I'm adding one of my little heart charms. And now I'm going to go ahead and close my jump ring. Now, I'm going to grab another open jump ring. And I'm going to put it through. Sorry, dropped it. <laughs> I'm going to put it through that first jump ring that's closed. And then I'm going to add another bead dangle. And another little heart charm. And then I'm going to close it. And I'm just going to do the same thing again. I'm grabbing another open jump ring. And I'm adding it to the closed jump ring. And I'm adding another bead dangle. And you might want to pay attention a little bit to how um, things are hanging. Because you can kind of choose if it goes on the right or the left. Adding a heart. And then closing. Okay. And you can kind of decide if that's how you like it. And then I'm just going to add another jump ring um, to this. And this is how I would add it to my charm bracelet, this final jump ring. Um, since I'm not doing that right now, what I'm going to do is close this jump ring. And then I'll know where the top of my charm is. Um, because I have this jump right there. So that's kind of a, a funky little charm for you. You can use for your charm bracelet or a necklace or whatever you want to use it for. So let me just tell you about my charm bracelet e-course a little bit. Um, now it is a start anytime e-course. So that means you sign up, you pay, and you can work at the e-course at your own rate. Um, there's an option to sign up for weekly emails. So if you prefer to receive an e-course in that way where you get a lesson each week for four weeks, then you can sign up for that, which you get access to after you um, purchase the e-course. You get a full e-book of everything, plus you get lots of videos for every single thing um, I show you how to make. Charm bracelets are so awesome because you can really express yourself and your creativity. Um, you can make them big and funky and chunky, or you can make them sleek and dainty and, you know, pretty, or you can make memory bracelets where you can put pictures of your kids, your grandkids, your favorite pet. Um, oh, just think how cool it would be. You're wearing, everybody want to see your bracelet and be like, yeah, there's my grandkids. Um, so that is an option. There are so many options with charm bracelets, and this e-course, I show you how to do, you know, tons of them. I show you how to use found objects. I show you how to make your own chain. How cool is it that you can actually be like, yeah, I made this charm bracelet. I made the chain. I made the clasp. I made all the charms. Um, and really get to show off all your, your jewelry making skills. So if you're new to jewelry making, this course may be slightly advanced. However, I do show you different options so that it makes things a little bit more simple for you. Um, if you already make jewelry, probably more of an advanced beginner or intermediate, this is absolutely perfect for you. Um, I'm going to show you how to make all the elements. Um, so you can pick and choose what you want to do. So just come on over to my website. You can learn more about the e-course. I actually have a payment plan option for this as well. So I um, will see you over there.